Today I've got a nice problem from the 2012 Berkeley Math Tournament, and it involves some nice notation which gives us repeated exponentiation, or really like a power tower, if you will. So let's define a arrow arrow b to be equal to a to the power of a to the power of a to the power of a, so on and so forth, b times. So as an example, 2 arrow arrow 4 is equal to 2 to the 2 to the 2 to the 2, which is 2 to the 2 to the 4, which is 2 to the 16, which is finally 65,536. And so our goal is the following. So the current time is 1.53 p.m. That's when I'm recording this video. Where is the minute hand on a clock in this number of minutes? So let's see what we've got here. I've called the number capital N, and we have three arrow arrow, three arrow arrow, three arrow arrow, three, with that nested parentheses action going on. So let's maybe start by looking at what's going on in this inner parentheses, and then we'll work our way out. But really, like, how is this going on? We want to know where the minute hand is. And the minute hand repeats after every 60 minutes, because that's how many minutes are in an hour. So that gives us some motivation to look at this whole thing mod 60. So in other words, we'd like to calculate n mod 60 as a number between 0 and 59, if you will. But let's notice that this number that's building this whole thing is the number 3, which is not relatively prime to 60. So we can't use our favorite tool when working with exponentiation mod n, which would be Euler's theorem. So that probably means we need to split this thing off and work n mod 3, in other words, reduce mod 3, which is actually clearly equal to 0 mod 3 and then also work mod 20. So in other words, we wanna reduce n modulo 20. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna look at this innermost thing first, but after doing that, we'll develop kind of a nice way to do it pretty quickly. Okay, so let's look at three to the power three to the power three. So that's exactly what this thing is giving us right here. So let's note that that is equal to 3 to the 27, just by regular old exponentiation. And then since we're working mod 20, maybe we should make a quick chart of powers of 3 mod 20. And we expect these to repeat. So let's say here we're taking n, and here we're taking 3 to the n mod 20. I don't have room, so I'll just put it in parentheses like that. So we'll take n to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then I think that'll be enough to see a pattern. So 3 to the 1 is 3, 3 squared is 9, 3 to the 3 is 27, but reducing that mod 20 will give us 7. Um, then 3 to the 4 is 81, reducing that mod 20 will give us 1, and then we'll have 3 again, and now we start repeating. So the important takeaway here is if we raise 3 to a power of 4, we get the number 1. And that tells us that perhaps we should rewrite this as 3 to the 4 to the 6th power times 3 to the 3. That's because 24 plus 3 is 27, so that's how that works out. But now this is going to reduce to just 3 to the 3 modulo 20, or in other words, that will be 27 mod 20, which is 7 mod 20. Okay, so that's what's going on in this innermost bit. But that tells us that if we look at the next bit, we want 3 arrow arrow 7 mod 20. But let's notice that 3 arrow arrow 7 is a power tower with seven threes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And using the same strategy here is actually like a pretty difficult problem. So we might as well 
take advantage of Euler's theorem in order to simplify this. So let's clean up the board and then we'll do that. So this is by no means a careful way to write down Euler's theorem, but it's like kind of good enough for our purposes. And what it says is if you're reducing a base mod n, then you reduce the exponent mod e to the n. So let's look at a big power tower of threes, and we're not actually going to worry about how many that we have because we'll immediately see a pattern going on here. So this first level, this base, like we said before, will reduce mod 20 because that's mod n in this case. But then what I'll call the first level, so that's the first exponent, will reduce mod phi of 20. Let's recall that phi is equal to the number of numbers between 1 and 20 that are relatively prime to 20. So you could easily make a list of just everything between 1 and 20 that's relatively prime to 20, and you would see that that gives you the number 8. So this first level reduces mod 8. Okay, then what about the second level? So this second level will reduce mod phi of 8 because in this second level, we're viewing this first level as the new base. So we have to apply Euler's theorem again. What's phi of 8? Well, that's the number of numbers between 1 and 8 that are relatively prime to 8. That is 4, all of the odd numbers in this case. So that second level reduces mod 4. Then what about the third level? So that third level will reduce mod phi of 4, which is 2. And then the 4 plus level, so everything above that, will reduce mod phi of 2, which is mod 1. But everything is congruent mod 1. So let's do some simplification here. So the base reducing that mod 20 is not super helpful here because it's already smaller than 20. Same thing as the first level. But the second level is also not super helpful because that's between 1 and 4. But here we're not between 1 and 2, so we can start reducing. So 3 is the same thing as 1 mod 2. And then 3 is the same thing as 0 mod 1, which is actually the same thing as 1 mod 1. So that means we can replace all of these with 1s all the way up. But that means that this whole thing is congruent to 3 to the 3 to the 3 modulo 20. But notice that it didn't really matter how big our power tower was here. All that mattered was it, that it was bigger than 3. So I think we can all agree that this number right here, which is in our larger parentheses, is definitely bigger than or equal to 3. And essentially what we've shown right here is if... Maybe I'll call it little m is bigger than or equal to 3, then that means 3 up up little m is congruent to 3 up up 3 mod 20 because of the systematic reduction that we've done, but that is congruent to 7 modulo 20 because that's what we calculated on the previous board. But that means that our whole thing, our n, is congruent to 7 modulo 20. So let's see what we know. We know up here that n is congruent to 0 mod 3. n is also congruent to 7 mod 20. So we need to look for a number between 0 and 60 that's congruent to 0 mod 3 and 7 mod 20. That means that n is congruent to 27 mod 60. Great. So that means that the clock looks like only 27 minutes have elapsed if maybe this clock didn't have an hour hand or if we were only paying attention to the minute hand, which is exactly what we're doing. So if the minute hand moves 27 minutes, from 153, that means that minute hand looks like this. So I'll just put an asterisk for the hour. We don't care about that. And then this will be 20. And again, we don't know if it's AM or PM either. So that's just the minute hand will be at 20. But the real thing here is like, how long is this? And I would wager to think that this number capital N is so large that perhaps the universe doesn't even exist anymore. So take that for what it's worth.
And that's a good place to stop.